Well, from a team now leaving the EFL to a team joining it for the very first time, I'm delighted to say, Harrogate Town manager Simon Weaver and club captain Josh Falkingham now join me. Congrats to you both. Um, we'll start with you, Simon. Has what you've achieved sunk in yet? Because it's such an achievement for this football club. I think it's just a, just starting to... Um, it's a culmination of everyone involved, really. Um, certainly don't look at myself in the mirror and think I'm a better person than last week just because, you know, we won the promotion. But uh, we're all buzzing right now. And it's been an immense last couple of weeks from winning the semi semi-final and beating Notts County in the final. Um, and... Uh, yeah, justifiably having a few drinks as well, so yeah, just to keep it going. It's such a journey for you as well, Josh. After starting at Leeds Academy all those years ago, can you believe that you're now finally playing in the EFL after all those years? Yeah, like for me, um, my little story, my journey, my career, where it's gone, I've, um, it seems a long time ago, but I spent a lot, a lot of years as a young kid from eight years old till 19 years old at Leeds United Academy. Do you know what I mean? It was my life and it were a huge part of it. Um, and it has been, and it's, it's allowed me to, you know, it allowed me to develop and um, become the kind of person and, and learn the, the things that I needed to learn at that age. Um, it didn't work out. Unfortunately, the dream was obviously for myself to be playing for Leeds United. Um, and at the time when I was at the club, um, there was in the football league. There was in League One. Um, but football is a ruthless business. I learnt that again at the very the start of my career, and, and my journey led up to Scotland. I had a few five or six great years there, and then once I come back home, um, and, and, and obviously the Gaffer, I had a, a year at Darlington, just finding my feet again back home. Um, the gaffer spoke to me. We sat down and, and, and listened to what Harrogate was was planning on doing, and the the aspirations of the club and where they want to go and it really fit exactly what I wanted to do I wanted to go back full time which were the first kind of tick box and then in them kind of first conversations that me and the gaffer had it were like like this we can we can do something special and we both spoke about the football league being being the actual ultimate goal and, and, and we managed to get promotion in his first year which was fantastic into the National League but when you're on that kind of momentum and, and, and you're on that role in football it's a special kind of feeling and luckily we managed to achieve that on, on, on Sunday and a fantastic a fantastic day out which made it even better by getting the, the right result and, and achieving foot promotion to the Football League where as all footballers that's where you want to be playing. Yeah, as you say, an incredible achievement. Uh, Simon, can can you believe that you're in this position, especially after such a, a long and uncertain campaign with everything that's that's gone on during lockdown? Um, yes, yeah, that's one of the things that's got to sink in, really, because uh, we we uh, sank to uh, new depths at times of despair, um, not knowing. You know, we were involved with the decision making process, trying to trying to find out how the season would be concluded, but um, we came back in into our our hands, you know, and we could do something about it uh, by having the playoffs to play. And fortunately, it didn't get curtailed and it was null and void because that was muted at one point. And that was a bit of desperation in the air from our point of view, you know, and I'm relaying it to the skipper today. And, you know, and then obviously he has to relate to the rest of the players. And there are scenarios where you're thinking, oh, my word, I've got nothing positive to say and I'm the manager. Um, but fortunately, you know, we've, we've had the playoffs and, and now we're in the Football League. Yeah, yeah, as well, Josh, how have you and, and the players coped with, with that uncertainty, as we've talked about off the pitch? You know, such a, as we said, such a difficult time for, for everyone. Yeah, it's, during that time, it was, I'm, you know, no denying it was tough as players um, and myself and the, the conversation that Gaff has just mentioned. Um, and it was more mentally tough. Do you know what I mean? Like for us to kind of get his heads round exactly conversations that I was having, then having a relay, like age where it was just constantly changing every single day. So every time I woke up from the conversation I would have got for the night before to then the next morning, it's completely literally gone from one spectrum to the to the to the total opposite. So you know, then lads come into me saying, "Faults, what's going on?" And I'm like, "Well, I can, you know, I'm only telling you what I've kind of heard and." I think it got to a stage after about six or seven, five or six weeks or what, I can't remember exactly. And I kind of switched myself off because mentally it was just kind of, it was just draining. And 
we kind of both said me and the gaffer when like we'll speak when there's actual concrete you know conversations and, and, and facts coming out and it sounds crazy but even the national like, it were only probably 24 hours before <laughs> the actual decision got made do you know what i mean of playoffs was happening we still we sat there gaffer invited us all the club and the players in an actual zoom call when he'd actually fully had the confirmation and even at that time as players lads was asking me in the whatsapp groups that we've all got are we getting promotion folks is he say is he say and we're all kind of sat there hoping that the gaffer's going to say that we was going to achieve promotion automatically then we get onto a zoom call and it, it, it's back to playoffs do you know what i mean but once we got our heads around that we knew exactly we had clarification and we was able to just kind of focus his minds we was delighted that we'd still got the opportunity and we all knew at that moment two games away from the football league so we we were able to get some good hard training set you know like a good couple of weeks of pre-season really if you like getting it in his legs putting the hard work in and all boiled down to two two games in which we managed to go through with flying colours and, and and I think everybody can and say that watching that we 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 really deserved as you say, such an opportunity, and you, and you took the opportunity. Uh, Simon, if I told you 11 years ago when you, when you took over, you'd be taking on, you know, taking on teams, these teams that we're going to talk about in a minute on a regular basis, the likes of Bradford, the likes of Oldham, the likes of Bolton, um, would you believe me? No. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was pretty desperate state of affairs at the club at the time. Um, no players, no atmosphere. Very few people going through into the ground. Um, just anything about, about the club, what, everything about the club wasn't in place. Um, so it's, it was never going to be a quick fix. Uh, but I think hunger and desire has, uh, has led us to this point, you know, where the last few years is just accelerated through the gears because of the, they say it's a combination of a lot of people, not just one person, two people, you know, and it's a really team effort and the chemistry has been there and you can feel the chemistry and it, it's a bizarre thing but you can feel it equally in changing rooms I've been in uh, where I think it's not going to happen here it's just not there but the last few years you can just feel us getting better and stronger as a group and and um, that's which was why it was quite hard to take in, in lockdown because we were all of the same belief I think without being arrogant we thought this could be this is our year, you know, the feeling so strong. Um, so when we got the opportunity to play playoffs, we thought now we have to just see it through. And you've taken quite a title though, as well now in the EFL, the longest serving manager in the top four divisions, taking over from, <laughs> from Gareth Ainsworth. How proud does that achievement make you feel? As obviously, it's such a tough achievement to, to have in, in the modern game. You don't see managers lasting a season nowadays. Well, it makes me sound like as if I'm going to be really old. So that's why I was dancing in the aisles at, uh, in the, on the bus you know, just to prove I wasn't just, uh, you know, in my 70s or something. But, um, yeah, I'm, well, it's, I'm proud of that. You know, it's, uh, it's been a long haul, but hopefully just because of the steps, it's justified my position, you know, the steps made that it's justified my position in spite of family involvement that, you know, we've progressed to the club. Yeah, Josh, I'm guessing that's a benefit to the players as well, working with someone for such an amount of time that you know you're going to have that continuity. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it's funny that you say that. I, I think with the gaffer and things like that, it, it doesn't really ever get mentioned, which it, the club deserve a lot of credit because as a player and on certain times, I'm talking about this that we've just had. We, we, we started slowly. You know, we was we was like dip to be right up there. We were slow. We had, you know, never at any stage in the change room as players, we knew that obviously there was security at the club. We saw other big clubs like Wrexham and, and Fylde, do you know what I mean? That were round about as last year at the top of the league and they was like very much very similar. Both clubs, Fylde have obviously been relegated this season. They changed the manager. Wrexham changed the manager and, and, and luckily managed to get out of it and kind of stayed bottom half which nobody ever thought that they was going to be down that, that end of the table whereas the, uh, even after the slow, slow start there was no conversations regarding that there was no press there was no you know in the group and with that security and, and that continuity that we we built we knew that as long as we stick to his roles stick to his responsibilities we all know as players not just myself as captain but you know 
everybody in their positions to play play a huge part and we have done all season and it's 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 it, it, the club and, and, and the gaffer and, and, and the chairman and everything deserve a lot of credit for that and it just goes to show which when you do have that continuity it breeds success and look where we are now do you know what I mean after after a real slow start we picked up some good results went on a fantastic run and then all of a sudden we just continued that and and managed to finish second like the gaffer mentioned in the lockdown period there were we were a bit like not being able to get and get. We, we honestly believe as a group we was going to catch Barrow, and I know people it's saying it's okay saying that, but that was the that was the belief. But once we actually got playoffs, it's a powerful thing what can happen when you actually believe it, it is going to happen. And yeah, the two games uh, um, and, and the promotion, it's just a fantastic achievement and one that we we're all really really proud of. As I touched on as well, Josh, the, the, the achievement itself means you, you face the likes of the teams I've mentioned, the likes of Bradford, the likes of, of Bolton Wanderers. Um, who are you looking forward to facing the most? I think, uh, obviously, the one everybody will be talking about is Bolton. Um, a huge, huge club, which, you know, being in the top leagues with under Sam Allardyce not so long ago, do you know what I mean? And um, some amazing players, and it's just really been unfortunate what's happened there and, and they found themselves in League Two and, and we've managed to get promotion. So a lot of people will talk about that. But probably for myself, the local one, I'm a Leeds lad. Um, I've played a, a fair few reserve games at Bradford City growing up for Leeds. So I think that one for me probably stands out a little bit more. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing stadium, is Bradford, with a, with a huge team and the amount of crowds and the support that they get there. And it's a real... You know, a real good place to play football. The pitch, whenever I played there, and I'm sure it will be the exact same last year, is a fantastic surface. And um, hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed that we can have some fans um, back in them kind of stadiums and it'll, it'll make it even a better day out for, for us all. But yeah, probably for myself, being from Leeds, um, the Bradford City one is the one that I'm kind of looking at and really looking forward to. Josh mentions the pitch, um, Simon, at Bradford City, but not an ideal situation for you with, with the plastic pitch having to be ripped up and replaced um, going into the season. Doncaster, a good alternative for you, though, for the time being? Yeah, I think so. It's a, it's a really good stadium, isn't it, to play in, and a good playing surface as well, which should suit us. Uh, not too far away. It's not ideal for, for us or any of the supporters, but we've got, that we've got friends there and they're helping us out. Of course, it's not long until the season starts either, Simon. Um, how long are the players allowed off now as well? Or is it more or less straight back into training for them? No, there's got to be some kind of closure and um, enjoyment to be had by everyone. You know, this week and uh, next week uh, will also be off. So it's two weeks and we're, we're back in on the 16th, 17th. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I, I don't expect that. Listen, they didn't lose much fitness over lockdown. It's based not on continual report to the players. It was just on tr on trust, and that's what we've got. You know, we've got a bunch of hungry animals, and to, to fault there, he got released from Leeds, and I got released from Sheffield Wednesday at twenty. And there's a lot of different stories, and underneath it, there's real resilience to most of the individuals of all of us you know, that have got that little point to prove and it stays with you that and you either go under or, or you go right pick yourselves up and unfortunately we've got a really close-knit group of individuals who have got a personality that shows right okay wherever we go we're going to make a game of it and uh, we will we will run through brick, brick walls and and I think part of that hopefully is that the truth and um, and like I say the fitness from to coming in is just it amazed us yeah, as coaching staff. So that's why we've given them two weeks off now. Yeah, sounds like you've got a lot of trust and a lot of hunger in that squad as well. But for you, Josh, as well, could that be a bit of an advantage being a part of these playoff games in a way? Like sort of like a, a pre-season. I know you've got the, the two weeks off, but you, you've had that game time, which those other teams in League Two haven't. Yeah, I think it will be an advantage. Um, we've obviously managed to... Um, kind of had that experience now as well of playing big games without no fans and, and obviously I think the start of the season is going to be very much like that with the starting in September um, so we've kind of got we've got we've got to use that there's there's always little small advantages that you can always use um, if, if, if that is the case of, of, of having a small advantage on other teams then we'll 100% we'll definitely use it um, but 
like the gaffer said, it's all about, yeah, we'll enjoy this like little period. We've probably have, I know the gaffer's given us two weeks, but I know the lads are already talking about probably only having a week, really. Next week, we'll probably start making sure that we get ourselves back on the road and um, getting out there and getting us fitness levels and making sure we're getting, as you can tell with my voice, all the alcohol out of the system. Uh, um, and so that we, we prepared ourselves coming in back in on the 17th and we'll have probably three weeks of, of real intense hard work. We've thrown in some pre-season games again, which will be really good for us. I've been playing as home games at, at Doncaster Rovers, which is fantastic and just kind of get used to them kind of scenarios and, and the feels of, of, of kind of a, a new home for a short base of time for, for a short while. Um, have you? But yeah, if, if people probably say that we've we've got advantages, yeah, we'll we'll definitely take them as positives and hopefully, like you say, that confidence, that that momentum that we've already got from from getting the two games and, and coming through them really well, um, we'll take it at the season and, and we'll hit the ground running. I didn't want to mention your voice, Josh, but uh, but there you go. Where Simon? <laughs> I need I, I need, to, I need to put all my hands up there. Do you know what I mean? I, I, like I just said. I, I did think I'd, I took it quite steady and not enjoyed myself too much, but my voice is telling me absolutely different story. So, oh, there's no hiding from it. Is no, it trouble? Say, Squeaking out. I mean, <laughs> yesterday my little girl wanted to send uh, Josh a, a message because um, Bolts is her favourite player, so she said I want to send him a vid- video message. So I'm there videoing this message to my captain. Then he came back later on in the day, and it was like squeaky from. <laughs> Toy Story, and uh, so I just sent him a message saying, "Get a hot drink down, you will, yeah. Sort your throat out." So it's yeah. no better today. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds like you're certainly enjoying it. Um, I'll end with you though, Simon. As a squad, what do you believe that you can achieve this coming season? Now, is it is it all about staying up, or can can you do even better? Well, I don't do even better, but we came into the National League. Only started last last season, um, so it's our second season. But with the mindset of right, okay, we'll ride the punches. If we get the nails, we'll pick ourselves up with the same group and go again, and we'll learn because the quick learners and the honest lads who all have got the uh, the pride in themselves to do well for the badge. Um, we're going with the same mindset, you know that we'll not make the numbers up, uh, but no grand statements, so no massive expectations burdening the players, and we'll just. Um, play our hearts out, you know, for the town and and um, hopefully keep the momentum rolling and see where we end up. Simon, Josh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Good luck in League Two next season. I'm sure you won't need it from me. Um, and, and, yeah, enjoy the rest of the celebrations. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.